right guys so here we've got apollo 1.6 cross polo um it's got the same engine as the polo vivos the 1.6s which is the cls and it looks the same as the clp 1.4 so today what we're going to be doing we're going to be changing the timing chain kit um to replace the timing chain kit on this car um i will show you basically what we need to do we need um uh, you'll need a jack because you need to jack up the car on this side so that you can be able to remove the wheel and take out the that pulley bolt over there i don't know if you can see that that big pulley bolt somewhere that side yeah you can see it right over there that pulley uh you'll need to remove that pulley bolt there then there are some bolts that you need to take out uh, on the sump which are four bolts they are allen keys they are tying this uh, cover to the sump and then on top of that uh, we're going to be taking out these t30 bolts all around and there's two hidden right over here there's two bolts hidden right behind this guy's two long bolts t30s to separate this guy from this guy uh, you'll find it in most cases like that uh, it would look like that on your car so you just push it down you push it down and then it will come off um we'll need uh t25s t25 to remove these two so that we can remove this bottle over here uh, the bottle you don't need to take off you can just remove it here and then just push it to the side that side um so that you don't waste your coolant uh, you'd need a 16 spanner to go right on that guy here so that you can remove this belt here um that's another thing that you'd need uh, you will need a after the t30s and stuff you'll need a 13 socket to remove this f cable here uh, you would need 16s 16s to remove this one here uh, you'd need another 16 to remove this one here you'd need 13s as well to remove this mounting here if you want to I mean, sometimes you don't even need to remove this guy depends how much space you want to have um i personally like removing as little as possible so that we can be able to um i can put back a little as possible you will also need to remove the the magic the the alternator 13s over here and this guy will need to come off but i'll show you that process is when we get there but nonetheless so you'll need those bunch of tools the engine is to be the car needs to be jacked up then after the car is jacked up you want to still need to have a jack underneath your engine because remember you want to be moving these guys you do not want to take these guys off before you check up your engine so this car must be checked up uh, you will also need very importantly a timing tool um, this guy is cheap to have um, i think you get it for like 400 500 bucks um, uh, this is the guy here this is the timing tool this will go on the locking pin it locks the crankshaft in position so that you can remove that bolt uh, so the this guy goes in at the back there i'll show you um this guy locks the okay the new tensioner will come with this guy and then this guy will go right on here so we're going to remove these two covers here and then that's where we're going to put in this guy um, we'll also show you this is the timing chain kit uh -huh. Let's see. so it consists of your chain this is a new chain you've got chain guides two of them these are the two chain guides and then last but not least you've got the tensioner this is the guy that always fails uh, after some time and um destroys your valves and bends your valve starting issues and all that stuff and so yeah so that's what we're going to be doing now um yeah so right so first step i'm going to jack up the car and then after i jack up the car then we can take it forward i'm going to check up the car put in a jack stand never get underneath a car that doesn't have a jack stand check up the car and then after that we're going to get in there all right guys so i've removed the wheel wheel is off on the jack stand and just want to show you here now 
these little bolts here, these T25, these, these bolts here, right here. I've removed these guys. Uh, you can see them all the way here. All the way here. You can go all the way here. They go all around. You remove them there as well. You remove them there as well. And so you can remove them if you feel like it. You can remove them all the way around. All the way here. Um, and there. But in my case, I just want to have enough space. So basically once you've untied it, especially on this side, you just have to wiggle it a bit so that it comes out here. Maneuver it. Yeah, that's what I want to say. So we just want to maneuver it until it comes out here. Yeah. Maneuver it. So I'm just going to maneuver it. In fact, I'm going to take the rest of it off. And then we're just going to take it out one time. I was hesitant to remove it because of these screws that are screwed here. They don't belong here. But nonetheless, let's do this quickly. Then you'll see. Okay, so all the screws are off now. So technically, this guy should come out as soon as we remove it from underneath here. I don't know if you can see that here. From underneath here. There we go. He's out. So... There we go. So this cover goes over there. It's out. Then now we've got access to the bolt that we want, especially this one. So this is a 21 millimeter multi spline socket bolt. Um, we need to, yeah, use that. Um, we need to undo that. But before you undo it, there is a a locking pin that must go at the back here, right here. I could feel it here. I can show it here. There it is. That's an eight millimeter socket that must go on there. I mean, Allen key. Sorry, eight millimeter Allen key. Yeah, I think I have it here. So this guy you can see. It's at eight millimeter. Let's try and get him to go inside there. Okay. There we go. So we should be able to take out this guy now. It's easier doing it from the top, putting a socket on the top and then taking it out. Easier that way. And then, yeah, we will be able to undo this guy. Some guys like using the starter uh, to undo this bolt, putting on a 20, um, uh, putting on the 21 and then in, putting on a maybe strong arm or whatever and then just using a starter to crank the car so that it hits somewhere here but obviously take note that can still damage some of your components on there but most importantly that it would be hard on your on your other stuff i mean like if you're going to be using the same tensioner as well and you don't want to put it under such stress but anyways if it works it works um right so yeah so as i was saying it's easier coming from the top here with the wretched let me just do that uh, while i'm there this is my wretched here and then we go in deep inside there you can see the Okay, so looks like it's loose. So anti clockwise. Ooh. It should be turning with my hand. It is turning. Just not that easily as I was expecting it. But yeah, okay, it's turning, yeah.
Okay, so we're gonna take that guy out. And then uh, another thing that we need to do, uh, I'm gonna remove this guy. <coughs> I'll show you here. So we're going to remove these two bolts over here. Make sure they don't fall because if they fall, sometimes they fall in very tricky places to get like in here. Once it falls inside this hole here, mm, it goes all the way down there and you screwed. Okay, so at least mine didn't fall in that hole. It's just here. Okay, so yeah, so okay, and then also another thing to removing this slip here, you can see that you can press it on top here, but there's another underneath one, there's another clip here underneath it, so you must press it on both sides and then comes off let me show you right here you can see there's one underneath and one on top so you're pressing them both like that to release um yeah so we'll continue uh over here um we'll continue over here um, one other thing that you might want to do uh you might want to disconnect the battery already loosened it because the reason why disconnecting the battery is we're going to be working removing the alternator as well so when you remove the alternator there's a positive wire over there and so you don't want it touching against even this guy here because it will short circuit and burn some stuff if not fuses then your computer box worst case scenario just remove one terminal remove one terminal there and then that's it and so now I can continue removing this guy. Um, this is a 13, as I said. It goes on here. There we go. Okay. So that guy is coming out. So, okay, once these two bolts are done here, yeah, you should be able to lift this guy up, as you can see, just pull it straight up, and I'm putting him this side, so I'm just putting it that side, then I don't have to lose the coolant that I'm using here, and then, remember, now, before we take all these guys, we have to support the, the car, and before we support the car, we must un do that bolt because it's going to be hard yeah and you might need two you will definitely need two extensions i've got two extensions here that i'm going to be using if not more so before you take off the belt and that bolt over there what you want to do is you want to take loosen the um, the water pump wheel which is this guy those three bolts are using this triple square. It's a 10 millimeter. Uh, it's M10. Uh, triple square or multi-spline, whatever you call it. Um, you want to just make sure that you loosen it uh, first. Because it's, you want to use the resistance of the belt to loosen this guy. So you put it over here. And so it works better with a 10 millimeter. Um spanner then you want to use your 10 spanner to loosen that guy anti-clockwise you know okay so there you go see that guy is loose now this one is loose and you move to the next one Okay, that's gonna happen okay but anyways it's loose the second one is loose and then we're gonna go to the third one now my spanner here yeah? okay this is my spanner number 10 spanner that i'm using here yeah? um okay so there you go you can see it here yeah? 
Okay, it's out. Third one is always difficult. The last one is always difficult, eh? Okay, okay but you know, it's, it's loose now. Uh -huh. It's loose, it's loose, it's loose. It's spinning 3D now. There we go. Alright. So now that's out of the way. Now that we got it out of the way, we can put up the jack and support this guy. Okay, so you can support it on the sump as well. The sump is a steel sump, uh, so it's strong to do that. Or you can do it right over here as well. I just like to go directly underneath the sump to make sure that this guy is covered. a little and then we can take off those big bolts there so now we'll take off these 16s these 16s here we'll have to go off first then we can take it from there okay as you can see this guy is coming off And if I had done all of these three, if I done do, if I had done all of these three bolts here without supporting the jack with the engine, I would be in trouble because it would basically go down by now because these are the bolts that hold it up. And so, okay, so I'm gonna do these three. Three bolts, you remember the order. This one will go on this side because it's for this one, right? And so, we take this guy off, we take this guy off, all right? So, basically, now it's up to me whether I want to take off this guy, this mount over here. Oh. I just want to leave it on and uh, yeah I think I'm gonna leave it on uh, if you want to take it out just remember these parts is the most difficult one to get to um, this is a nut for that guy um, if you feel you're gonna forget stuff just make sure that you put it back where you take it out wherever possible um, like if I was to forget now I'd put this guy on here just a little bit so that I don't forget where it comes from, especially if bolts are different lengths. Um, all right, so there we go now. He is like this. Um, hmm. All right, so let me continue taking off that Allen key at the back there as we talked about. Okay, so this is what this bolt looks like. Um, it's out. You can see here this is that LNT world the number eight all right so he's out and in this place in this guy's place we're going to be putting in this locking pin which is this one he's going to be going right into that hole there Okay, I'm not gonna screw it all the way in. I still need to just make sure that this guy is on TDC. So we're gonna remove spark plug number one. We're gonna remove this first one and remove those two that side. These guys, these covers, which are held by two bolts each, T30s as well. Okay guys, so I'm about to remove the coil plug number one. Uh, I'm using a kit here, uh, this one, to remove these coils, very importantly, 
Um, so this is not necessary for you to buy. Um, I just bought this to remove these guys easier because most cases people will use a flathead screwdriver and um, and be like that. Okay, so here it's better because there's a little bit of this space here as you can see here. So you'd be able to do that, but you need on two on each side. So one, I mean, you need both of them. So you need one this side and you'd have to have another one on this side to pry it up at the same time. And so also one of the things that I've done here is undid this guys here. So you just do it like that, you know, so that it comes out. The reason why I'm doing that is so that when I lift this guys up, there's no need for me to unplug it underneath. I can just take off the coil and put it one side. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to be using this tool, which goes like that, and we pull. Then it comes out easier. So then take off the plugs, which are also a 16. Just take off one plug here, one the first one to get the TDC. Okay. Okay. So you can also use the same coil to just take it out. There you go. You can see it here. Yeah, we can see it here. It's out. Yeah, it's out. And so now, put it off one side. So I'm going to use just this dipstick here to just give me an idea how high or if this thing is a top TDC basically okay so now I've undid this to and these two as well so you just need a, a small flat screwdriver to just remove it on both sides here there's a little bit of oil that's going to come out don't be scared it hasn't broken anything and then this side as well Right, so both sides are out now. Uh, both sides are out, you can see this side. So this basically tells us that it's not in timing yet because this one is supposed to be somewhere here and that one is supposed to be somewhere here. So we need to rotate it on the crank. All right, so as you can see here, um, I just want to show you where the bolt is that locking pin this is where it is it's right here so it needs to be screwed all the way in once we know that this is high enough and I'll show you this side this is basically showing it's a little bit in timing it's a little bit out but um, that's why we're changing the chain anyways um, so we gonna do that i'm gonna screw this guy it's a 19 to screw that locking pin in there make sure that it doesn't run into the crank try and turn it with my hand as soon as it
This is easier with the spanner. Come on. Let's spin it with my hand again. So it spins with the ratchet and then it wants the hand again as soon as it gets tough. But you get that real. Alright guys, so just one more thing. Oh, another thing. Next step forward is this guy. Remember these two bolts here? These long ones. Go underneath the side. T30. Take them out. And then you pull this guy just to the side like that. And then you're good to go. And then number two, taking off the belt. Um, you need a 16. So here's a 16. I'm going to show you how to do it from the top because in some cases you might want to just replace your belt. So there's no need for you to remove covers and everything. So we put on this guy like this, right? And then that's a 16. I'm using a 17 here to go onto this guy like this, just to extend the length. And so, okay, so just to extend the length, that's what we, sorry, I'll just put it on that bottom one here. So it's just to extend the length, guys, because it's deep inside there. So when you push it back like this, you can see it's bent out like this. And uh, I'm just trying to do it here. Yeah, it's difficult to do this with one hand. But okay, while you're holding it with the other hand, you can literally take out the belt like that. So as you take out the belt, there you go. It's out now. Then literally take this guy out. There you go. And you can continue undoing these guys by hand. They will undo easily by hand because remember we loosened them earlier. This is the bolts. Yeah. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we we'll do another one here. This is the water pump pulley. So if you were to replace the water pump, this is the bolts that you'd first need to undo before you undo the T30 bolts. There are 40s there on the water pump like these ones. So there's four of those ones on the water pump. And I'm about to do the last one now. Uh, okay. There we go. So the wheel is out. So... <clears throat> We're not replacing the water pump on this job, but however, what we are after is these bolts that, that you see here. Let me show you this one here. There's one here and there's one at the bottom, somewhere there, just behind this thing here. There's one there. We need to undo those two so you can't get your T30 mark in this guy here. All right, so that's it. And then um, I've already broken loose this bolt here for the pulley and just show you here. Uh, there we go. So now I can undo this guy here. There we go. So we then did that one as well. It's the pulley bolt, crank seal over here. Without removing that bolt, this cover will not come off because that pulley is very important. Number two, you won't be able to take off this one as well, uh, which is hidden by that wheel. So these bolts are bolts, all of these bolts, they are bolts that must come out. One more thing that I want to mention before I start taking off these bolts, and uh, using an allen key to remove these ones underneath here it's one two there's a, a third one here and there's a fourth one here right here so make sure you see there's oil dripping here and sometimes this oil can get inside there and dust and debris can get inside there and so when there's dust and you try to put your your socket or whatever that you're using to take out if it sits on top and does not go all the way in then you'll end up stripping the bolt so that's very important that you make sure 
you would clean it out with a pick or something like that or even a toothpick or whatever um i'm using something like this but there's a straight one that i use but just to do like that on the inside of the bolt uh doing that that as well so that i just try and remove the dirt so that when this guy goes in let me show you on this bolt here in the front so like that so that so like that so that you can be able to to the socket so that it goes in completely yeah so that's yeah that's what it is all right so i'm gonna undo these four bolts and then all these t30s here there's quite a few as you can see there's quite a few there's some hidden ones here those two don't forget these two don't forget that one as well those two are very hidden um you're gonna do undo this 13 here for the alternator this 13 there's another one on top we're gonna undo that one then we also want to remove the wheel uh, this pulley wheel here we have to remove that so next we're gonna start by removing this pulley wheel to 16 and then removing that one and that top one and then pull out the wheel so i'll show you okay so i've removed this guy yeah that goes right there right there i've removed him this is out and then this is the 13 for the alternator that you must take out they're a bit on the long side but it's doable this long all right. all right so i've removed the bolts the way to get out the alternator you just push it back so here um on this side you can just pull it back and then it will come off if it's hard like that mine just take a screwdriver you can even put it right there there we go you see it's coming out now okay that one is out so once the top part is out uh, you can just wiggle it wiggle it until it comes out pushing it back there we go that's out right see that is out so now the only thing that's in our way here is these bolts we're starting with the small ones before we take off these ones if you take off these bolts one two three these are 16s if you take off these first these ones will be harder to take out and they might get stripped here they might get stripped on the inside because it will be too much pressure that they're holding so when you take them off you first start with these ones take off these small ones here it's t30s and then once you've removed these T30s all the way down to the bottom, then you can take off this one. Installation process is similar. You want to first start by screwing in these ones. Don't tighten them. Just keep them loose. And then screw in these ones. Make sure that they've got threads. Each one of them must tie on the threads first. Just thread them so that they go in properly. Put them in by hand. You don't have to tighten them. Then after that, once all of them are in, you can tighten these ones. You tighten these ones as hard as you can then you can tighten these ones after that all right so yeah let me take off these ones now um these t30s then we'll take it from there okay so the timing chain is out the cover and um, you want to find that once you remove all the bolts uh, these three bolts were the last ones that i took out as discussed and then you just need to apply a little bit of pressure here and here with a, maybe a rubber hammer or something a hammer to take out this guy so that just make sure if it doesn't move that means there's a bolt that's missing here uh, but yeah just here um 
I'd say, yeah, if you burn the oil filter, make sure that it's not the one that you're going to be using again. Uh, so now, um, I've taken out the tensioner. Here's the tensioner. Just two screws here. That were just here. Uh, there we go. So I've removed that. And so now, all that's left to do is to remove this chain. So I'm going to push it to this side. You can feel it going out of timing. It's not an issue because we're going to put it back. as well okay all right so i've put back this bolt here so that i can use it to turn um i just want to show you here because we had uh put in the the thing magic the bolt there this locking pin so the crank should go to tdc now and stop there uh, you can hear that sound it's compression so that's I don't know if you had that sound. It's it won't move after this. Uh, that's it, yeah. So it's sitting still, yeah. So it means the bottom is in timing. You can put in a dial gauge as well there to verify that. Um, then on this side, I've put in this guy here. So. Putting in this guy is a bit challenging. Okay, this part that's cut away here, it says to be facing up. Yeah. Right here, it's facing up. So these pins go into those little holes for the cabs. But it's difficult to put it in at first. It won't just go in directly. So I use this guy here to just move it about here. Just move it here. Uh, so that it won't move now because obviously it's locked in place and this one as well it's sitting still so basically it's saying to us that the cams are in timing and the chain is also in time i mean the bottom the crankshaft is in timing so basically now what we ought to do is to put in the chain and you'll see on the chain why you need a timing tool the chain does not have any timing marks whatsoever so neither do these guys here so that's why you need to um, ensure that you've got a timing tool when you're doing this guy. And I'm going to put one guy here. I'm going to put it on this side. And then, so you can see the middle right there. It's standing up properly. Oh, it's steady. Nice and steady here. Um, there are times where you've messed about with the timing. Maybe you've messed about with these bolts here. And you find that by the time you put on the chain and it's in timing there and it's got a little gap here at the bottom it like it there's a sagging of the chain like in the sense of show you like maybe this way to do that you know and so if you cannot move it to another teeth and it sits like that then you'd need to adjust it you'd need to loosen these two bolts um, I think they're 24s you need to re I mean or one of them just undo one of the bolts and then from there it's more specifically this one just undo this one mostly uh, and then try to put on the timing uh, chain there at the bottom nicely and the guides and put in everything while this one is loose then put in the tensioner there while it's loose and then from there it will bring tension and bring this t this gear a little bit back then hold it with this tool Hold it back, like as you're pushing it back, and then tighten that guy while it's hold back to make sure that you don't have any um, a saggingness of the chain right here in the middle there. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I'm gonna do now? Let me put on this guy here. Wow. Just fell inside, you know.
that's not a place where you want the chain to fall in it's difficult to get out as you've seen um, chain must go this side there you go it's in here on the cams and then next up which will be this guy with three holes mm -hmm. Okay, so he's in. Um, right, so this guy is in, and so the next thing you must make sure that this guy goes in correctly uh -huh. okay so now it's in there is no sagging on this side very important that you watch that out i don't know where i can put you guys here so i can uh, i'm gonna hold it on this side Okay, so anyways, couldn't do that with one hand. So I'm gonna try again here. Uh, it's usually easier with two hands. This one I'll show you. Yeah. Oh man. All right. <sighs> Dust. Never good for the engine. Make sure it doesn't go in there. Let's try this again. So what we need to do is just get it in the hole there. Okay, which it looks promising. Let me just first start by putting it this side. Mm. All right. Ooh. I managed to do it. Okay, so that's in there. That's fine. So that's good. Now we're gonna get this guy. So with this tension, I'm just gonna put on the bolts here. Start with this one. This bolt here. Then we're gonna put in this bolt right over here. one here all right so next up make sure there's no dust that got in a dirt or debris that got in here So just wipe that area first where this guy sits here. Wipe it with a clean cloth there, fiber glass cloth, water of tea. It's all up to you. Okay. Okay. Then next up, we can pull this guy. 
So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure here. So that when I pull it, it doesn't bounce up and down. Then I pull this pin. See what happened there? As I pull this pin, it applies pressure to the timing chain kit. And then, next up, we just have to remove those lockers there at the back. Uh, usually it's a nightmare to take out after you've done the timing okay, you've done the timing here Ooh. and it always falls luckily i caught it this time all right so you can see it here see those holes are the holes where those pins go in So very important now at this stage you don't want to turn your engine anti-clockwise or less clockwise i'll show you a way to get rid of that bolt there um yeah so the next thing is we're gonna remove that bolt and connect back this cover but first we'll need to put in some sealant there the bottom there the bottom of the sump here which is underneath here as well clean it off with a blade and then put in some new gasket maker just there at the bottom then yeah all right guys so over here i've undid this bolt now there are two ways to do it you can hold this guy maybe with a vice grip or something or water pump pliers just hold this guy and then undo this guy because it's not that tight or you can just put in a a socket here and then put in a ratchet here and then just yank it quickly like that then it will undo just make sure it doesn't move a lot and come out of timing so now i'm taking this guy out bolt is out as you can see and then what we're doing next we're taking out this guy here okay so we have to remove this guy let's make sure the seal remains here we have to remove this guy and then once it's removed we're going to come back and put it in here carefully not to bend the seal so we're putting it here so that we don't struggle to put it in and then the other thing um i've already put in my silicone here and i've already put in that silicone there at the bottom as well to make sure it don't leak there um all right so now i don't know if this is possible to do with one hand but nonetheless let's try let's try we can only try uh-huh uh okay 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 it's gonna be a little bit challenging but it is doable okay. mm -hmm. Ooh, okay this one down Okay, let me try and connect this guy in and then show you afterwards. Alright, so it's in, pushed in now. I'm gonna align it with these three bolts here. Just by putting in this one here, making sure it's straight up. Clockwise, clockwise, we're turning it clockwise. And then This one is showing a bit tricky, but nonetheless, I got it now clockwise as well here. Yeah. Um, there we go. That's and yeah, there's another one. Oh, okay, this one will need to lift up the engine to do. The bottom one but whilst we had that while we still here on top we wanna put on these guys here and make sure that they have at least cut the threads here 
but yeah so basically that's what we're gonna do all the way around guys we're gonna be putting in these guys um before we tighten those three here we're just making sure that these guys are aligned because you don't want sometimes a gasket here yeah, does shift and um when it does it just gives you all sorts of issues you know gives you all sorts of issues so we want to make sure that we've got okay i'm just bringing it closer i'm not tying it tight tight bring it closer and remember where the lock long ones are are for the short ones are for the short spaces here and then on this side you're gonna be now getting on to the long ones so these are the long ones here this is the long ones here yeah. and then there's another long one here Basically, that's what you need to do. We're pulling back all the bolts. Then we're gonna come on the end, put on and tighten these three, and then we can tighten these ones. Yeah. Okay, guys, so here's the timing done on this baby. That's how you do the timing for the Polo Vivo. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe, and more videos coming soon. Um, yeah, so let's take it uh, from here. All right, thanks a lot. Um, one other thing that I just want to say, um, very importantly, don't attempt to start the vehicle before you've put on this belt here. This surpline belt here, this V belt, is extremely important that you put this guy on before you start the car because if you don't do that, there's more chances of it coming out of timing. So otherwise, yeah, thanks a lot for, for watching. Um, Please, if you have any information that you need help to, just uh, give me a call in the comments. Uh, or just let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to respond. Or if you've got um, some other tips, you know, we, we're always sharing. Thanks.